What's up folks, I'm Private Hudson and this is Backbone. This game just came out a couple of days ago and I haven't heard of it before until I loaded up my Xbox Game Pass app and saw this on the recently added list. I like the art style, I like the premise of you playing as a private investigator in a dystopian society, and I like story-driven adventure games, so I decided to check it out. Next thing I know, it's 3 a.m. and I've just finished the game in one sitting, which took me around five hours. My thoughts were somewhat mixed after finishing it, but overall I held the game in a positive light. But then I decided to dig a little deeper and do some research. Before I begin, I just have to say that it's going to be a little difficult to cover a short story-driven game where 99% of the gameplay revolves around walking around talking to people. The story is the central point here, and I'll try to make it as spoiler-free as possible. Backbone had a successful Kickstarter campaign in 2018. In 2019, they released a free prologue on Steam. This prologue serves as the first act of the final game, and for some sort of reason, is the most advanced and fleshed out part of the game. Yeah, that's right, two years later, and this prologue has more going for it than the rest of the finished product. You play as Howard, who is a raccoon and a private investigator. Howard is a nobody who makes barely enough money to scrape by. His newest job is to investigate an otter whose wife suspects is cheating on her. Your trail leads you to a club that you're not allowed to enter because you're a raccoon or a striper. It's a dystopian world where the apes are in control and what types of jobs and opportunities available to you are determined by what type of animal you're born as. I suspect this is why they used animals as characters instead of humans, as the latter wouldn't go very well. Anyway, you have a couple of ways of getting into the club. You can either break into a van and gather some code words to use for the intercom system to get through the back door, or you can try to convince the owner of a newsstand to let you climb it so that you can get access via the rooftops. The latter will require you to bully a competitor off the streets. Once you're in, there's a little stealth section where you have to avoid a guard and then a clever little puzzle where you need to overlay papers on top of one another to figure out a code for the elevator. Eventually, you come across your target except he's dead and his body is being butchered for meat. Howard escapes the club and starts puking on the street and that is the end of the prologue, or the first act of the finished game. So far, we've come across many interesting characters. The game presented multiple ways of reaching an objective, and it mixed up the gameplay by including stealth and puzzle-solving sections. Well, guess what? There are no more puzzles for the rest of the game, and I don't recall there being any more stealth either. You still come across interesting characters, but except for your cab driver buddy, Anatoly, and your journalist friend, Rene, who you team up with to try to crack this mystery of murder and cannibalism, the rest of the characters are just there for one scene or one act. Most don't appear again. This leads to another issue. None of your dialogue choices matter. The majority of other characters' responses to you are the same no matter what dialogue option you pick, and even if their response is slightly different, Backbone is linear with no branching paths, so every scenario has the same outcome. This means Backbone has no replay value, especially since there's only one ending. It also means that the pleading some characters do about not divulging their secrets to other people has no moral weight or any bearing to the story. Backbone just ends up falling apart in its last quarter or maybe even last third of the game. It somehow ends up becoming a sci-fi body horror mess Random things about the world are introduced out of nowhere. It turns out there was some big bad war a long time ago and a huge wall was built around Vancouver as a result. Now no one is allowed to enter or leave. So many characters start talking about it out of nowhere near the end, but up until then, nobody mentions it. When I initially finished Backbone, I enjoyed it even though the story fell apart at the end, but once I realized that the prologue has been out for over two years, and it was the most developed part of it, my appreciation for Backbone turned into disappointment. It was a huge missed opportunity. There's a few bugs as well. Sometimes the mouse cursor disappears during dialogue, but you can use the number keys to select which option you want. 
but I had a more serious issue where the game just froze up on certain parts. I mean, the game didn't lock up or crash, it was just stuck in a little section after I finished talking to a character and, and the camera was all zoomed in and wouldn't zoom back out, and I couldn't walk away, and I couldn't, I couldn't do anything other than quit the game and relaunch it. But the problem here is that Backbone uses checkpoints for saves. So, unless you had a recent checkpoint, you just lost 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes worth of progress. I still love the art style and the animations, I love the music, I love the setting, and I like around half the story before it just turns into a, some weird mess that doesn't make any sense. I mean, the game just has so much potential and it's beautiful to look at. Ultimately, it ends up feeling like a rushed mess, and I can definitely understand how people who either kickstarted it or began to follow it after playing the prologue are left feeling angry and disappointed. So is Backbone worth the $25 asking price? No, it isn't. I don't think it's worth $20 or, or even $15 for that matter. Frankly, it might not be worth it at any price point. The first act sets expectations that are never met, and the story falls apart the closer you get to the end. All I can say is, if you are already an Xbox Game Pass subscriber, and you like adventure games, then maybe you should check it out. Because at that point, you're not paying for it, so the worst you have to lose is maybe 5 hours of your time. But hey, at least you get an achievement for petting all the geese in the game.